What's up guys, it's Drak, and this is the Exus 2 shell that I brought back from Singapore. This is actually its slide that I removed to do a little bit of light testing, but this is the perfect blank canvas, and as we proved in our original video, it actually, wow, uh, time for a fan mail video. That stuff's starting to build up, but um, as we proved in our original video, this is a perfect candidate for really any kind of long shot internals that you want to put in it, and my friend David from Australia uh, threw this at me right before I departed from Singapore, and this is another artifact kit and it worked so well and it was so clean and easy to install that I actually just want to do that again but now that I'm in my workshop and I have access to all of my stuff I think that we should do something really really special for the shell and that couldn't be any easier because all of these black parts just remove from the shell so we can get a pretty good blank tan canvas hit it up with some vinyl dye and and get hydrographics with it but I think that this will be really really special by the time it's all said and done Okay, so we are inside the x Zeus shell here, and you can see that we're uh, fiddling with the Artifact Hunter kit. Getting these Nerf Turf springs on is really difficult. For the test, we're just using one of them, but getting both of them installed is quite challenging. And of course, you will need original long shot internals. That's the plunger tube that I'm using, and I actually use an original long shot trigger for the, the test segment in this portion. But this is all just kind of getting the fittings right for the, the Artifact kit so that We'll know exactly where to screw our barrel in and then where to screw that uh, that little hex screw in to, to make sure that it's perfectly aligned into its receiver. Of course, you do have to dremel out just a hair of this one reinforcement to make sure that it fits flush. And mirror that on the other side. Shell is largely symmetrical. It looks pretty good. We'll tease that barrel in so that it's got a complete seal. And then this is the lock nut that I was talking about. And now that it's tight, everything is kind of aligned. And then I like to sand out that front bit just a hair so that we can actually fit this part up into the front of it and it'll act as a stop gap. It's two layers of precision and then we super glue that into place as well. Hing has better super glue, but I'm gonna use this. One last test fit, and then we can do a quick firing demo before we actually re-dissect the shell and begin on our hydrographics and paintwork. So before we put on our green enamel, we have to have a solid base coat for the X Zeus. So I'm doing that with a gray vinyl dye. It'll allow our green to still be very neon and vibrant as opposed to using black for the base coat. But this is really just to ensure proper adhesion, and we're putting it on this side to make sure that we absolutely get these rails so that no tan shows through. So a lot of people skip this step where they don't come through and touch up like from the inside areas and I think that that is a mistake. So I like to make sure that ports that are open uh, don't show through. So like part of that is making sure that the magazine well is now gray instead of I guess this is desert tan or what have you as well as this uh, port for the release from the inside and out because you will be able to see inside the blaster. Now if you get most of it, it's not a big deal because then the inherent darkness inside the shell will protect you from seeing that tan. Especially since uh, this blaster does not have a jam door, so you're never looking in from the top, only the bottom. The vinyl die cures really fast, so all we have to do is give that a couple of minutes, then flip it and put a top coat on the blaster itself. Awesome possum. Whee! So we're adding a full top coat here of gray vinyl dye to the outside of the blaster, and the trick here is to get two really decent coats. The, the vinyl dye provides not only a consistent base coat, but also just really good chemical adhesion to that, that base of ABS plastic. Now we're going to clear coat this with 2K clear, but it's still really, really nice as a base coat. And then this that we're coming over with now is green neon engine enamel. So it's automotive grade enamel paint, and we're only putting, again, 
two coats of this on because it's got really good consistency to it. Now once it's painted, we've brought the entire shell inside. You can see that I've laid out a dragon hydrographic film here in our tank. We had to get a new larger custom tank to, uh, to dip this blaster because it is so incredibly long. I have a full tutorial on hydrographics and how to do them in-house for very little money on my channel that you can check out at any point. But this is the point of no return. And we find out that the dragon head film actually breaks very nicely. You can see that it largely dissolved there. And so as I tilt it and bring it up out of the water, EOC recovers it and takes it off for a quick rinse with warm water. And then we're super duper time lapsing through this, but I actually clean up the tank. So what I'm doing right now is wiping it down with a paper towel and then second verse, same as the first. We're gonna dip this slowly at a, a slight angle. I use less of an angle when I dip than other hydrographics people. That's just what works for me. Um, but the activator is on and so that ink has become liquid on the top of the surface. And now we can line up our shell exactly where we want it, trying to find like good pictures on the shell so that we, we really get the images that we want in the places that we want. And then once we're there, we just push gently through and the film will break as soon as the piece breaks the surface of the water. Hydrographics is just a really, really cool technique. The trick is to take your time, tape everything off, and really just not rush the process. Practice will, of course, make perfect. Nobody is good at this when they first start out, but this shell turned out perfect. A shell this nice definitely deserves the absolute finest labels and nameplates that I could get. So I hit up my friend Avery at Custom 3D Nerf and he printed these off in gold vinyl. It's adhesive effect vinyl so you can see that I'm rubbing on the nameplates to this side of the shell and we even have a golden Drac logo to match. I want everybody to know who, who spliced this one up and gave it a nice set of paint. So if it looks like we're putting the blaster back together for the second time, that's because we are. We've gone ahead and added a second Nerf Turf spring for a total of 26 kilograms to our plunger. And then the hunter kit is being set back into the shell now. The vinyl die doesn't get in any of the, the way there, and we're realigning not only the rails on the side and screwing them back into the shell, but we are also uh, showcasing that if you take out a small portion of that square reinforcement right above the trigger, you can fit a black artifact trigger in. Means that between the magazine release and the stock, all the hardware is now black or gold, so it looks quite, quite impressive indeed, I think. Alrighty guys, so it is complete and I can't even find the words to tell you how thrilled and excited I am that this project is complete because it's a lot of work from a lot of different places and those are always the most fun projects. The one where you really like take a bunch of parts from a bunch of different people and then combine it with techniques and the absolute best materials, spare no expense and really make something exceptional. So what else going on here? Well, uh, it's obviously an X Zeus 2 shell by Jet X. Those are remarkably affordable now on eBay and so I, I figured it would be the ultimate base for this blaster and then inside we have an artifact hunter kit that's allowing us to get a full seal breach and just a ton of power. So that's uh, multiple parts from Singapore, from I think China is where artifact is based, all into a very tactical thing. Then of course we have this really well applied dragon film. And it's always hard to get hydrographics to show up well on camera, but hopefully you guys can see just how clean that turned out and how nice that is all underneath in all-American 2K clear coat to make it absolutely perfectly protected and it looks great and it's been named Regal. Regal is of course one of Danny's dragons from A Song of Ice and Fire and then we have the uh, same Drac logos in gold. I wanted to do a lot of gold on this because I do silver on everything and so the nameplate's gold, the logos are gold and then we actually came in and we couldn't resist. There's one smudge here which if you've got to find a flaw in the blaster that bugs me to no end. But if we look at this side, you can see that we did a carbon fiber gold hydro dip. That's right, we took this apart completely so that we could hydro dip even the rails, which were already a beautiful anodized silver. But it wasn't gold, and it had to be, because we even replaced the trigger with a black artifact trigger. Not a huge mod there. Everything is, of course, still fully adjustable and fully functional. But the real heart and soul 
of this blaster is that we came in and added 26 kilograms of Australian spring power. That's right, it's powered off of Nerf Turf Springs. It's got the 16 and the 10 inside, which means that even for me, it's actually quite difficult to prime this blaster quickly. I'm thinking of taking it down to just 16 so that we can properly power through it. This is an artifact mag, but it's firing X darts. Those are the Explore darts du jour. And as we fire it, just just a monster amount of power. So back and then forward. I can't seem to hit these little guys. I need to add a, uh, a scar to the top end of it because it almost has too much power for darts that weigh this little. But we're breaking FPS of like 260 uh, with this setup and that's still using like a stock Explorer plunger, or not Explorer, but a stock long shot plunger tube. I'll eventually get these stupid bears firing at min gun targets here. We're about ready to cheat. What do I have? Three shots left? Yep. Gosh, so much power. Okay, fine. Defeated. Wow! It's a good thing we haven't been hitting them because, oh my gosh, that's nuts. So in addition to just being an aesthetically very pretty blaster, the Rhaegal is clearly monstrous. I don't even know what to make of that. We literally obliterated one of our foam targets. What if we set it like this? Maybe the craft foam will protect it from a follow-up shot? Uh, looks like, looks like we deflected well, but Blaster is aesthetically pleasing, a powerhouse, and clearly hitting some remarkably high FPS. That is really, really cool. I do want to maybe come back in and in lieu of the orange flash hider, add one of my scars from Singapore, which would make it easier for me to hit things. It would actually stabilize the darts as they're coming out and, and help me get at least a tight grouping with them, but uh... Absolutely in love with this blaster. Hope you guys can appreciate just everything that went into it to make it so very special. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. This is what a top-tier Springer build looks like in 2017. And I think that the future is bright. Can't wait to see more stuff coming out of JetX. Can't wait to work with it. <laughs>